Let's talk bonuses today. Mark Burke from Hartford, Connecticut. I apologize, Mark. It took me about a year to get back to you on this one. I think it's a great question. So why it's taken me a year, I'm not quite sure, but this is for you and your team in Connecticut. You know, Jamie, what is your philosophy on throwing bonuses for the team? Do you make them field related? Uh, a bonus for promoting a leader? Are they financial or material related? Individual or team based? And if someone misses a bonus one week, do you throw it again the following week? So I like where your head is at. I think it's really important to give recognition to people. And of course, for commission based people, I mean, to shower them with financial rewards, I think is wildly important. So yes, we got to be throwing all kinds of bonuses. Let's start with that. I mean, Napoleon Bonaparte, I want to give you a quote, a soldier will fight long and hard for a bit of colored ribbon. He used to give his soldiers like all kinds of toys and trinkets and medals and trophies for, for a job well done in the military. And, and he just noticed his people would run through walls for little bits of recognition that really didn't cost much, but they meant the world to people. I think about the, the Green Bay Packers, the flag football team I had the privilege of coaching this last year. And these were seventh and eighth graders and we fought real hard for the championship and, and we won. And at the end of the season, we were given these championship rings. Let me zoom in on this because this is important. I mean, this thing couldn't have cost more than $20, but when everybody was presented the ring, the eyes lit up and when the applause was coming in from the parents, everybody's like, they're wearing their ring with pride. You know, my son the next day goes to school and he's got his championship ring on and his friends are like, ooh, you know, what's that? It's like, well, that, I'm a champion, Green Bay Packers champion. Uh, on date night with my wife, you know, I decided to put the ring on and, you know, maybe flaunt a little bit with the weight or whatever. I mean, nobody really said anything to me, but I'm saying to my wife, I'm like, hey, you're married to to a champion, like as much as I'm kidding around with that, this little trinket meant something. It was the blood, the sweat and the tears. And we appreciated that recognition. So for the rest of this episode, we're gonna talk about what behavior should we be incentivizing and how, what kind of creativity can we use as far as compensation and rewards for that great behavior. I certainly reflect a lot on my field experience when I'm making these videos and I can't help but think of the first time I really observed and noticed the power of bonuses really. And so you know, I'm training my new guy, Simon. I'm a new leader and love this kid, Simon. He's over in England today and I hope uh, one day Simon gets to watch some of these videos because um, I learned so much from you and I, I think that journey through the field was just so important for my career. You know, I'd pick Simon up every morning on the way to the office and we'd always stop by the local donut shop and pick up a couple donuts. I always got the same donut. I got the French cruller and Simon always got some kind of glaze something or other. And so it didn't take long for Simon and I to get competitive. And, you know, we'd say, listen, low roller buys the high roller donuts, you know, the next day. Since we're going to the donut shop, you know, every day anyway, it's a routine. Let's turn this into a little bit of a bonus here. And so we fought battles you know there were some great fights competing for these donuts and i'm telling you i looked at that french cooler when i'd win and i'd hold it up like a trophy i'm like oh simon this tastes it tastes so much better when you buy it i don't know what it is i don't know what kind of ingredient they throw they must know on the days that i win they, they put something special but thank you simon it was like a, a trophy to me and i remember when simon got promoted to leadership it was so funny because, you know, he gets his promotion. He was a little surprised. He's like, well, promotional leadership? What does that even mean? And he said, listen, I never had a goal to become a leader. That was never my goal. My only goal was to beat Hep. I did not want to buy him donuts. So, I don't know, all those donuts that he bought me and I bought him, I guess that's what led to my promotion into leadership. And I'll gladly accept this promotion, but let it be known, it was really the donut that motivated me, not so much the promotion. So that was my first time I really noticed, hey, there's something to be said about incentivizing and there's something to be said about really tapping into the competitive spirit. So what milestones and behaviors are we really looking for, okay? so. I like how John Maxwell frames it. He talks a lot about shepherds, okay? So if you're a shepherd, okay, I don't know anybody who's actually a shepherd right now, but this used to be a career path, I guess, way back in the day. But let's say a shepherd's in charge of 100 sheep. I mean, apparently what a shepherd does is you find your best behaved sheep, okay? You find that one sheep that's like, oh, this thing actually listens to you. It's not a wild one, you know, running around all over the place. 
and you put a bell around that sheep and apparently you're just getting the other sheep to draw attention to this one. Okay, so whatever the behaviors are of this one sheep, the other 99 will follow the one with the bell around its neck. So just be smart as the shepherd to put, you know, put that bell, the noise, the attention on your best behaved sheep. So it's like, oh, that's interesting, right? So, so what are those behaviors? What is the bell that we're looking for? And so I'm looking kind of like Napoleon. Anything good going on should be incentivized. Like, don't make these milestones too far apart. You want to make them immediate. You want to make them quick and you want to give back. So my first bonus for new people coming in is the Hall of Fame Day bonus. Okay, so you're your fourth or fifth day into the business. You're, it's your first day on your own. And the way I've always framed it is, hey, listen, up until now, you know, you've had a, a leader there with you. Like if you come across a testy customer, like, well, okay, you get this one. This one's all you. Well, you're on your own. You got to deal with them all now. And so here's some bonuses to incentivize you on your Hall of Fame. And of course, everybody's applauding and you can do it. And so... So immediately, four or five days into it, here's your first bonus. I've got a new hire bonus, and I try to make that one a rich bonus, okay? So your first two weeks, you, you go through that first gate, two weeks of hard work, you're showing up on time every day, you're learning, asking questions, you hit a couple few sales, nothing too big, I'm gonna give you a nice rich bonus. Currently, I give a $1,000 bonus for that, for that first two weeks, okay? So I want to make it rich i want to make it a big incentive where it's like man that'll change something in my life an extra thousand dollars so you know and when i calculate the the money that it cost me and the money that i made i mean i try to you know make it a little bit of a loss not too big of a loss for me as an owner with the new people coming in but i want to give the owner's profit back to those new people in a nice rich bonus so again i could keep going from hall of fame bonus to the entry level bonus all the way to, listen, there's a consultant bonus. There's a million dollar bonus when collectively we hit a certain milestone. So I mean, that, that's huge. That's like winning a Super Bowl, kind of like, wow, you're talking about a million dollar bonus. But along the way, you're looking for all kinds of checkpoints to just show great behavior, great salesmanship, great um, leadership. Again, you have a new leader on your team, you can put a bonus around that. So you're, again, you're looking for all different kinds of milestones here. Um, you can also do things that don't require a whole lot of structure. Like I remember one time I did this preliminary interview and the guy was just a total rock star. And I remember coming out of the preliminary interview and my newer recruiter, okay, she was just learning the business. I gave her a $50 bonus just on the fly. And I'm like, keep bringing me more people like that. So again, it doesn't have to be something you really think about, put it in writing. Like, hey, here's the structured bonuses. You could run all kinds of bonuses on the fly, similar to that little bonus with the donuts that I had with Simon. I didn't think that thing through. I'm just, I'm always looking for any reason to get competitive or throw some kind of reward at people for their hard work, recognize their accomplishments and their hard work. So what are some of the bonuses that we can throw people? I mean, obviously money, okay? People want to, you know, Give me some extra money on my check for a job well done. Nobody's going to say no to that. So don't be shy to, again, just be generous. I'd way rather err to the side of being generous than being cheap. I mean, you know, you can go cheap on a lot of things, okay? Like, I go cheap with hotels. I mean, I've had complaints over the years like, Pep, why do you put us up at the Motel 6? I mean, because I'm cutting costs. So I'll go cheap with that. But I don't go cheap when it comes to bonuses. I want to be generous with bonuses cheap with things like hotel. My team nights have kind of been cheap with the chicken wings and things like that. But again, when it comes to rewarding people, that is one of those expenses that is, that's just money well spent, okay? I'm investing the money into the people that I work with. So, so money's good, things are good. Obviously they cost money for things. Didn't take me long, you know, as a new owner in Los Angeles to realize, hey, we've got a garment district here in LA. I can get a custom made suit for less than $100. So when I throw a suit bonus at people, you think about it, a guy gets a, you, know, you pick the material that you want, the colors, and it's like, wow, I got a custom made suit that makes you feel like a million bucks. That's money well spent on my part. It's investing back in, in new people's images. So I love suit bonuses. I love gas cards. And I believe as gas cards, you can write those off through the business too. So 
you know, don't quote me on that, but uh, do your own financial homework on that one. But people love gas bonuses with these high, you know, gas prices. So, so I think things are good. And again, some of those things can be written off as a, an expense through the business. Um, so those are great bonuses. Well, there's also, I've noticed that over the years, you've got to be great at event planning. Okay, so it's one thing to throw money at people, throwing time at people is super important. And so one of the best guys at event planning, I think, is Sebastian Angus. And I remember him saying something that was very smart that I, I certainly took note of that I want to share here. I, you know, I noticed you, you're really good at these events, Sabs. Like these are real cool things that you put together. And he said, he says, I always want to put together, put together an event that's people's first time. Like they've just never done it before. And so people remember that. I think there's something ingenious about that. First time experiences, memorable experiences with people. Again, I think that's just time well spent. Okay, so, so incentivize with time. Um, along the, the same page as time, uh, invest in people's education. I mean, that's the gift that keeps on giving. If you can find ways to bonus people by getting them smarter. I mean, I love giving away books. As you get smarter, you become a more valued person in the business, right? Again, the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, send people to courses, send people to other offices, traveling, seeing other things, experiencing things. So again, the more I'm, in, I'm, I'm rewarding people in the business and, and helping them level up in the business, the more they're helping, it's a compound effect, they're helping other people step up as well too. So those are just some of the ideas for you. Of course, breaking bread together. I mean, anytime you get to eat, whether it's breakfast, lunches, or dinners with people, there's something in that bonding experience. So my restaurant tab is usually quite high, where it's like, oh, well, you go out to eat a lot. Yeah, I just like breaking bread with people. So, so again, those are some of the things. But again, the biggest thing, Mark, is you're looking to give back to your people. Go cheap on a lot of things run in your business. I've never had a fancy office that go cheap on rent but I don't go cheap on the people that I work with. I want to reward them. That is an investment. I've always looked at it like, you, for, for a dollar you put in, if you're investing in the right person, you, you can get a hundred in return type of thing. I mean, what a great stock tip that is. You're making investments in your people and you'll see the benefits of that in the long run. So I hope that helps you, Mark. Hope you enjoyed.